Hey guys, we're back. Are you ready for another one? So for today, this is basically going to be my makeup collection and declutter for face powders. And the reason for that is because I don't have a whole lot and I don't think I'll be getting rid of many. So at the very best, we'll be just taking a look at what powders I have in my collection currently. Set right here is going to exclude anything in a project pan or anything new that's been put in my everyday makeup drawer and moved into my collection since I've started this video. So jumping into it, the first product that I have here is the Makeup Revolution Coconut Powder. This is the Coconut Scented Baking Powder. And it's just in a translucent shade. This is an okay powder. It's got kind of like a white cast. It's kind of thick which I guess makes sense for a baking powder. If you get this though, I wouldn't really recommend it for a full face because like I said, it's kind of thick for that um, and easy to see on the skin if you do it that way. I would just definitely recommend using this for a actual baking powder. So I'll be keeping this. The next one is the Maybelline Fit Me Powder. This one is in the shade 100 Translucent. Again, I'll be keeping this one. I mean, I have pen on it. This is a really great drugstore powder. I'm sure that you know that already because everybody has all the best drugstore powders and this is one of them. And this is great too, like if you have dry skin and everything, it's not too much, but it covers real nicely. This next powder here is from Bare Minerals. I got this at TJ Maxx. This is in the shade Golden Fair. So this is a touch deep for me, but I think it'll work in the summertime. So I mean, taking a look in there, this is what the powder looks like. It's a good powder. It's just that this is more, suits me better, more in the summer. So I really like Bare Minerals powder products, but they don't get a lot of talk on YouTube for some reason. But I would recommend Bare Minerals powders in general. So I'll keep this. And then this is the Ulta Beauty Finishing Powder. This is super affordable. It's in the shade Translucent. I do have pan in it. This is really affordable, but it's a super thin, lightweight powder. And I mean it, I mean it's so, so thin. Like so thin. If I didn't already have pan in it, and we'll be using it up, I'd probably go ahead and chuck it. And I probably I I probably would not recommend anyone purchasing this. Um, because you have to use a lot of it to really set your makeup and just kind of give you a little extra coverage boost. So I would probably pass on this and get a drugstore powder that's highly recommended. Like I said, I'm keeping this for the sole purpose of it's already got a nice size pan. So I might as well just use it up. Next, this is the IT CC Airbrush Perfecting Powder. And I have this one in the shade Fair. So I believe this is supposed to be a powder foundation, possibly. But it looks like that. You can see Fair is definitely more yellow tone. And you can see how like thick and full coverage it is. This is a really nice powder. Whether you're using it as a powder foundation or just light touch of it to set your pow or to set your face and give you more of you know a perfected look. I would recommend this powder for sure if you if there's a shade that works for you. Again, it cosmetics products aren't really hyped up on YouTube, but this is something else that I would definitely recommend. Next, this is an Ofra powder. This is in their this is their translucent translucent highlighting luxury powder. I know this isn't translucent. This is not translucent. Why does it say translucent? <laughs> um, I don't know why it says translucent because it's definitely not. I mean, just take a look. It's super yellow, but this is like an amazing powder. It really does wonders on the skin, especially if you're using it for like a finishing powder. That yellow to it really brightens up the skin and also, like it says, it's like some type of highlighting powder, so it also gives you like a glow. So it's a two-in-one perfect powder. I absolutely love it. This is like the only Ofra product that I own, and it's such a good powder. Then this one, I'm sad, sad. This is what I'm sad about for Becca. 
This is from Becca. This is their um, Hydra Mist Scent and Refresh Powder. I know a lot of people on YouTube did not like this, but I absolutely love this powder. So, I mean, it looks like that. Now, this powder basically is like cold or cooling. So, when you put it on your skin, it almost feels wet and cool. And then when it dries down, it's just like a regular powder, but it's got a nice coverage to it. And I don't know, just something about it. I just absolutely love using this powder. I'll be sad when I finish this up. I thought about by repurchasing like a backup, but whether where they are closing, I mean, whether I bought a backup or not, once I run out, I run out and that's the end of it. So I might as well just use what I have and try to find something to replace it for this type of powder. It's unique in that way, I feel, but I really liked it and thought it was good. All right, and then I have this KVD powder. It's their setting powder in the shade Translucent. This powder, I don't think there's anything special about it. I don't think it's bad, but I don't think it's, you know, special. It's just your average setting powder. But it does have a more heftier price tag, especially when you can get something similar or better from the drugstore, you know what I mean? So, and this is a small sample size, so I think I'll just go ahead and toss this one. And then next, I have this MAC Light Plus Mineralized Skin Finish Natural. So it's in Light Plus. For some reason, MAC has fallen off the YouTube bandwagon, and I'm not sure why. Their powders and their face powders are really good also. Like, you know, like I said, like with Bare Minerals. Super good. I love the way my skin looks every time after I use this. And you can even use this as like a light coverage powder foundation too. It's very versatile. And they have other shades available. So I wouldn't let the Everybody Hates MAC on YouTube deter you from, you know, really trying some of their other products other than the ones that are loved on YouTube. So this is great. Then I have the infamous Cody Air Spun Loose Face Powder in Naturally Neutral. This is a ginormous powder. The powder itself is good. It's good quality. It sets your face makeup perfectly. It looks good on the skin. It lasts all day pretty much. The one downside is the scent. It's heavily scented and to me just kind of reminds me of CoverGirl. Other than that, this would be one of those powders that's super affordable, a large size so you get a large amount. So it's like one of those things that this would be all that you would need as a setting powder, a face powder. But that scent is just unbearable. I wish they would do away with that. It's too heavily scented. And for me, it just smells like CoverGirl, and I just don't like that scent. But I'm going to keep it and go ahead and use it up, or try to anyway. I mean, how long does it take to use this thing? Has anybody ever actually used one of these up in completion? Um, this has 2.3 ounces, so 65 grams of powder in here. All right, and then next, this is the Beauty Bakery uh, Flower Powder in Translucent. This is a really nice powder too, guys. Beauty Bakery has a lot of cute, nice, fun items, um, but other than being cute and fun, their products are really good quality, and you can find them at Ulta. So, I mean, look at this powder. It just, it's so good. I like this powder, too. I would highly recommend it. This is the translucent shade. It's soft, butter-like, kind of like flour, I mean, you know. And it just sets your makeup and you can't even feel the powder or your makeup on your face after you've put this powder on. Highly recommend this guy also. Now this is a powder I wanted to love wholeheartedly but I just don't. This is the Pacifica Crystal Rays Luminous Translucent Setting Powder. So this is supposed to give you like a luminous finish when you apply this to your face to kind of set your makeup and everything. However, it is disappointing in that regard. This is what it looks like. And it does give you like if you put it on your skin, if I'm doing a swatch, okay, if I'm swatching it like this right here, building it up, you can, you can see that luminosity. But it doesn't translate to your face when you're doing like a lighter dusting like that. 
if it looked like that on my face, I would freaking love this. But I don't love it as much as I thought. I'm going to keep it. It is a newer powder in my collection and it's a full powder so I might as well keep it and use it. And then next I have the Too Faced Do You Powder. My little component is broken on this so I have to be careful. As you can see this powder is everywhere. I got this at TJ Maxx. Not sure why it was at TJ Maxx because I think it's a pretty good powder. But as you can see this kind of gives you like a luminous look too. It smells good, it gives you that luminous look, and it provides a little bit of coverage. I think it's an amazing powder. Um, so if you can get this on sale, I don't know if they sell this anymore or not, but this was a nice powder. They may have like a permanent version of this, I hope. we can. If they have a permanent version of that, I would, I would, you know, once I use that up, I would go ahead and get that. I like those luminous powders though. Um, I think they're great. This is the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder in Translucent. This is a good powder if you have uh, warm yellow undertones in your skin because it has like a yellow tint to it. Also, if you have oily skin or combo oily, this is amazing powder for the summer. If you have dry skin, you're not going to like it that great because it is a mattifying powder and it does its job. This will be the last one of these that I buy. So once I use this one up, I'll no longer be buying this powder because my skin is now dry and it's just too much for it to handle this. But back in the day, I raved and raved about this. This was like a holy grail powder to me. So need a good um, drugstore matte powder, have oily skin, get this one. I don't think you'll be disappointed. This one is the AOA Studio Perfect setting powder and this is in the shade banana this is uh, comes from shop miss a and it's like a, a dollar this is a really nice banana powder so it's yellow in tone and again this is one of those powders that every time I put it on my face I really enjoy the finished look of my skin when I put it on um, it's just a simple powder with a yellow color to it. It really brightens up the skin. Look at that. See, you can see it. It really brightens up your skin, but it also sets your makeup nicely as well. So if you're ever on Shop Miss A, I would look into this powder. It's nice and soft, velvety too on your skin. It's good. Then I have the LA Girl Pro Face Powder, and this one is in the shade Classic Ivory. So, this one, again, it was another powder that did not wow me. The color's nice on it, I like that. But I don't know if it's supposed to be like a powder foundation or what, but it's just, I don't know, it's just... I have other powders that I prefer over this a lot more um, and it's just not impressive to me so if you're looking into powders I would skip this one but again I'm going to keep it because I don't have a ton of powders and I'm just going to go ahead and use it up because that's how I roll for the most part anyway. Next I have the pure powder this one is in the shade. This is the 4-in-1 pressed mineral makeup and light. This is also a powder foundation. As you can see, mine's got a lot of hard pan because I would put it on with a sponge is how I do it. And I hate when powders get hard pan like this. But this is an okay powder, a uh, powder foundation. I don't really care for it as a powder foundation unless I'm applying a heavier amount of it with a sponge. But as just like a general setting powder, I think it works fine. But for the price point, I really don't think I would recommend this for a powder foundation. There's better out there at a lower price point um, that I think does a better job as far as like coverage goes and stuff. So this one is okay, but I'm keeping it to get it used up, obviously. Now this is a drugstore powder foundation that I can get behind. This one I could recommend to you. This is the Maybelline Super Stay 
full coverage powder foundation. And I have this in the shade 102 Fair Porcelain. Now I like to use powder foundations interchangeably so as a I like to use them as a powder foundation and then a more lighter application as a setting powder. And like I said, as long as I have a shade that matches you, this is a powder foundation I can get behind. I can recommend it to you as a powder foundation or as a setting powder. It is affordable. It is from the drugstore. So look at that. That's kind of light for me, which is common trend for me for drugstore face products. But I mean, that's not really a great depiction, but that little spot right there, that's a lot of coverage. Okay, and you can build it up too. I mean, it's really good. I would highly recommend it. And so clearly I'm keeping this one also. All right guys, so that was my face powder makeup collection and declutter. I did only end up getting rid of one, but that's not too bad because I mean, it take it don't take long to go through powders and I don't have too many to begin with. So, but as you can see, I've panned in quite a few of these. Um, a lot of these are actually loose powders. So, but I can go, me personally, I can go through products, I mean, face powders pretty quickly. I am kind of heavy handed with them most of the time. So I don't think this will be, this is too bad of a situation here. But anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, please let me know. Go ahead, give it a thumbs up. Uh, give me some comments down below if you're so inclined. And if you have subscribed today, I really do appreciate that. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thank you for watching. Bye.